same? I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what conquered hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this afternoon. Thank you for these uh, verses that we have read. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you help us as we look at principles that the Apostle Paul, that you use Apostle Paul to write, dear Lord, uh, about our relationship, dear Lord, our relationship with fellow believers, our relationship, dear Lord, with uh, uh, leadership of the church, our relationship with unbelievers, and most especially, dear Lord, our relationship with you. I pray, Lord, that as we look through these verses, that we will be able to find, to see uh, where we are, ano po yung laman talaga ng puso namin, and where and uh, who do, uh, what do we really love more, dear Lord? And I pray, Lord, that after this message, the challenge will be taken, dear Lord, to make more room for your people and more room for you in our hearts. And I pray, Lord, that you help me as I preach and explain. And may this be a blessing, dear Lord, and may your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So you may be seated. Thank you for standing. So uh, I have found that I found so much blessing in when... Uh, as I continue uh, preaching through a book, um, one, if, if I may uh, um, recommend it as, as well to my fellow preachers, one thing that, you, you, uh, that is a blessing when you preach through a book and stay faithful preaching uh, through that book is that um, there's no room for you to skip anything. That you, you follow all of this and, and, and the message, that especially the ep ep uh, epistles. Of, of, of Paul. You follow the message because Paul is very uh, methodol methodological. Methodol is that? <laughs> methodical. Yeah. He's very methodical in how he, how he gets a message across to, to churches. And most of this time, uh, we find that the Bible is very relevant in any time, in, in, in any time, Amen. especially today, it's relevant. Even though this uh, book is uh, written to the Corinthians, even though other books are written to Timothy or to Titus or to whoever, the, the Bible is relevant even to us. It's always applicable. Bagamat uh, contrary to what we always hear that um, the Bible may be outdated, the ways of the Bible may, may not work anymore today, but as the song says that, uh, we have been saved through the way of the Bible and we must continue living the life through the way of the Bible. Okay? Even though we, we might be uh, uh, called old-fashioned, it doesn't matter because that is the way that we were saved in the first place. And, and it's foolish, as, uh, as Apostle Paul says to the Gal to Gal Galatian people, it's foolish if you think that you can get saved by grace through faith and then live with your own uh, uh, um, intellect and with your own effort. It's foolish. If you get saved by, uh, by grace through faith, then you have to live your life the same way, the, the Christian life the same way. That's why we should not depart from this Bible, uh, from, from the Word of God. Um, uh, I, I've read, um, but, uh, as a way of introduction, I've read in Facebook, a um, uh, hot topic today is politics because tomorrow will be election day in the Philippines. So now, uh, what happens are groups of, um, and this, it has been going on for a long time, uh, cults and their, their groups have been always uh, um, endorsing candidates who to vote for this and that. And when I was younger, I always heard Baptist preachers saying that that's not the right way. You should, they should not endorse. Let the people decide. They should not force their opinion on the people. But sadly today, those same preachers are doing the same thing. And one of their um, uh, reasons why they do it is uh, so that in, I'll speak in Tagalog because I don't know this in English. So that para masabaya naman natin sila. So that we are going to same same with them. Okay? Because uh, they think that they think that they're getting left out. They think that they're get, being insignificant because they're not uh, uh, voicing their opinion about politics. And that is getting away from the truth of the word of God. That is getting away from um, not to mention the fact that Baptist pastors are 
running for politics. So it's a really sad day, a really sad time to, to, uh, to, be, in the, to be a Baptist in the Philippines. Because these people are representing the name Baptist. So that means unbelievers or non-Baptists think that all Baptists are like this. Yeah. But that's not true. There are Baptists who remain true to the truth of the Word of God. And praise the Lord that we do our best by the grace of God to remain true to this as well. So as, as I preach to this, I see that the Apostle Paul is slowly uh, but surely trying to fix all, all the errors in this church uh, through, the, through the writing, of course. So um, we have previously studied from chapter 1 to 5. We've seen all the problems of this Corinthian church. First is that they are very carnal. They love the world more than, more than they love the things of God. Um, and then they, they also doubt the uh, apostleship of Apostle Paul. They doubt his ministry. They actually blame him to be someone that is very rude and someone who's abusing his uh, apostleship. And also they doubt his apostleship altogether. So uh, looking at these verses uh, and, and, and seeing what this, these Corinthian people are doing to the Apostle Paul, you can see that they have caused the Apostle so much pain. So much heartache. Why? Because imagine someone who goes to, to your place, um, his life, uh, gave you the gospel, gave you the truth. Um, because of him, you were able to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And then, uh, he, uh, and actually every place that he goes to, he almost, he's being persecuted, he's being imprisoned. But then he gives his life anyway. We've read that last time. Uh, we've studied that last time. Even though he has, um, he has persecutions, he's in prison, he's always been consistent. But what happened is when he left these churches, false prophets will be coming in and para si Thanos lang, ganun lang, magbabago isip nila kay Paul. Just like that. Uh, their, their minds will change about Paul. Their, their, their uh, perception of Paul will change. They will blame him. They will accuse him. So this church has uh, caused him a lot of heartache. Of course, we cannot imagine what kind of heartache that is because none of us here, or maybe some of us have handled churches. Uh, I haven't. But uh, just to imagine uh, people who will uh, uh, stab you uh, behind your back or people who will... Uh, um, not stay loyal to you even though you're not doing anything wrong to them to them that hurts okay uh, i I've, I've, uh, I've had i have had a lot of friends who are not my friends anymore because of uh posting on facebook the truth of the word of god and somehow even though we praise god because of what happened it still hurts and uh because you consider them true friends and if you consider them a part of your life but this is what's happening to paul but as we, as we can see here paul is now transitioning into fixing the relationships inside this church. Now, he mentioned, he, uh, when we preach through these um, uh, uh, verses, I have also preached uh, in this um, passage before, not so long ago. But what we fail to see sometimes is Paul is not only concerned with their relationship with unbelievers, but also their relationship with each other inside the church. Yeah. And most especially, at the end of this passage, he's also concerned with their relationship to God. Amen. Okay, So this means here, the relationship that they have to fix. They have to fix their relationship with Paul. They have to fix their relationship with each other. They have to fix their relationships with unbelievers. And they have to fix their relationship with God. That is the message of the Apostle Paul. And despite of all these troubles, all these heartaches, Paul started with this. Uh, transition with this. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart, our heart is enlarged. Now even though, uh, um, um, despite of all the things that were happening, Paul is still trying to reach out to these people who are indifferent to him. Talagang inaabot pa niya, even though they have caused him trouble and heartache, uh, because he is a true leader, he is a true uh, a man of God, he's still reaching out to them. He's always, his uh, heart is always open for reconciliation. That's what he wanted. So I, I, our hearts, our mouth is open unto you. It, what this means is I have spoken freely. I have spoken truthfully. I, I have not held anything back. Okay, I have told you everything. Our, our mouth is open unto you. Our heart is enlarged. You know, this is the heart of a true shepherd. This is the heart of a true pastor. And it's hard to compare many pastors today to this to the heart of the apostle paul now today sadly a lot of pastors are full of pride that if you do something wrong to them you're done if you do something wrong to them because they're the most important person in the church and that is pride because they're the most important person in the church you're done 
Okay, uh, 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 you don't go against the pastor. But here, the Apostle Paul is the one pleading to them. He's the one telling them, hey, I'm still open for reconciliation. I've done my part. I've forgiven you. I've told you what you've done wrong. I've forgiven you. Um, remember, there's a person here that he's really talking about. You, uh, a person who's caused him so much trouble and pain that he almost wanted to go there, bring in the rod and just hit them. Right? The, the, the Paul became very emotional. We don't know what they did, but Paul became very emotional because of that. But he's still open to them. He's still open for reconciliation. Our, our mouth is open unto you. Paul is saying that I have spoken everything. I've, I've told you everything. I've not hidden anything. And although Paul is very honest, one thing, pagka honest yung pastor, masakit minsan, or kadalasan. An, an, an honest pastor, an, a pastor or a preacher who, who speaks openly, more, most of the time hurts listeners. And because the truth hurts, if, it's, if it goes against what you believe, if it goes against what you think, it will hurt. But then the Apostle Paul says, I, I'll, I, I've still spoken that, even though you've hated some, some, that sometimes, because he remains true to his word. He, he says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, speaking the truth in love. Now, even though Paul is uh, uh, saying all these things, uh, hard truths, painful truths, he's doing this because he loved the Corinthian people. And if he doesn't love them, he will not write these letters to them. Para bang sagaba lang. Uh, I believe Paul has a lot of a lot more things to do. He has a lot of uh, marami pang churches na pwede niyang sulatan. There are churches that are giving him joy. There are churches that are giving him encouragement. And this church has, um, seemingly has given him nothing but discouragement. But he still says, hey, I have spoken openly unto you. And our heart is enlarged. Okay? Uh, the, the meaning here is that uh, we, we still have a lot or I still have a lot of place in my heart for reconciliation to you. Okay? Um, you sabi nitong enlarge because I have so much love for you. Hindi, sabi, hindi literally enlarge of course but I have so much love for you and I have a lot of room to love you. And then may kita natin dito kung ano yung contrast ng kay Paul his relationship to them and their relationship to him. The Bible says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12, For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world, and more abundantly, to you, Lord. I love the, uh, the Apostle Paul, his mind and his heart is always to the people that he is discipling. It's always to them. Remember, uh, we have studied that Apostle Paul's, uh, Apostle Paul's desire is to be with the Lord. But he said that if I remain here, it's because of you. And it's true to his word that all, everything he's doing, the way he lives his life is because of these people. That's why even though the way he speaks, 2 Corinthians 1.17 says, When I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness? Or the things that I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh? That with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay? No, the Apostle Paul is, the, is a man of his word. Okay? What, what is true, he says. What they have to hear, he says. You know, you have to be careful with a preacher who doesn't do this. A preacher with flattering lips. A preacher with, who only says what you want to hear. A preacher who only says what is good to your ears. That kind of preacher only wants your money. That kind of preacher only wants your friendship. That kind of preacher only wants your approval. And he, is, he has nothing to do with the glory of the Lord. Now we we should be we should feel blessed because we have preachers or we have a pastor who will say things as as it is who will not remove anything for the from the Bible who will preach what the Bible says. Kadalasan po kasi uh, para lang hindi makasakit iwasan natin yung ibang bagay. Okay, sa so, totoo lang po I had a double mind preaching this. Meron naman ako excuse na preach ko na to eh. May na na preach ko na tong uh, passage na to, pwede na ako mag chapter 7. But um, it's not it's it's, it's not it's uh, hindi po tama. I, I have committed to preach through this uh through this book and I will preach every truth that is here regardless of who gets hurt. And regard and even though I myself get hurt a lot of times. You know because this book will really make you look at yourself and just compare yourself to what a, a true believer should be. So, so, so the Apostle Paul, uh, let's go to Titus chapter 2, verse 7. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness and gravity, sincerity. Kahit po dun sa mga young preachers, yan yung, yung payo ni Apostle Paul sa kanila. Okay? Be true to the doctrine, to your relationship. Sabihin nyo lang yung totoo. Don't be afraid. Just speak the truth. Don't be afraid. Just tell them what they have to know. You don't have to think, you don't have to worry about what they will feel. 
You don't have to worry about what they will what they will think about you as long as you're speaking the truth in love that's what they need and it's up to them how to respond to that it's up to them if we speak if if a preacher is genuinely totoo na nagsasabi ng katotohanan dahil sa pagmamahal at iba ang reaction about isa that is now your responsibility it's not the preacher's responsibility if the preacher will hold back truth that's his fault but if the preacher will keep on preaching the truth because of love and, and, and truth of the Word of God, and if you respond negatively, that's your problem. You cannot blame the preacher. You cannot say, that, hey, I got, I got offended. If you get offended with the Word of God, the problem is with you, not with the Word of God. If you get offended with the words that the preachers use or, or the choice of words of the preacher, then maybe uh, it has to, uh, the preacher has to do a better job in phrasing things. But if it's true to the Word of God, your responsibility is to obey. The Apostle Paul, if you read uh, uh, chap, uh, 1 Corinthians, he has very strong words for them. Words that made them change their minds up to, uh, about the Apostle Paul. But it's the truth. Wala siyang, wala siyang magagawa. Now, uh, one principle that we see here is if we are to build a good relationship with each other, with, with believers, we have to be open with each other. I'm not saying that uh, uh, each one of us come here in front and tell our life story. It, we just have to be open. Wala pong, uh, okay lang kasi may personal kang mga tinatago. Because that's personal. Or kayong mag-asawa. Kasi sa mag-asawa. Pero wala na po sana yung mga uh, grupo-grupo na meron din kanya-kanyang sikreto. Yun yung nakakasira po sa simbahan. Uh, kung ikaw lang, personal, because you choose not to, not to say it, that's your choice. That's fine. Kayong mag-asawa or your family, that's your choice. That's fine. But, hindi na kayo pamilya. Magkakaibigan na, meron pang grupo, grupo meron pang sikreto-sikreto, yun ang nakakasira sa simbahan. Especially if those things concern the church. You know, the Apostle Paul, if, if it concerns the church, if it concerns the Word of God, he says to them, we have to be open to each other. Okay, sabi niya po dito, ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. Para sinasabi ni Apostle Paul, hindi sa akin ang problema. Because I have opened my heart to you. I have given you enough room in my heart to love you and to forgive you, to be reconciled to you. The problem now is with you. Okay? The, the word straightened here in Greek is sten koreo, which means to be cramped in a narrow place, restricted, to lack room, pressed or distressed. Ibig sabihin po nito, sabi ni Paul, marami akong room sa puso ko para sa inyo, pero, ako, pero, pero sa puso nyo wala na akong lugar. Yun ang problema. That's the problem with the Apostle Paul and these people. I love you. I love you so much, uh, so much so that I'm sacrificing for you, but you're not doing the same to me. And I, I want reconciliation. I want a relationship to be fixed, but, the, but it's your turn. That's what the Apostle Paul said. Ikayo naman. Ginawa ko na part ko. I have forgiven you. Kayo naman. You know, this is one thing na may kita natin. If we have a pastor or, or preachers, leaders in the church who are honest, who are, are doing their jobs faithfully uh, according to the Word of God, dapat po, we also should seek, even though tao lang mga to, we also should seek good relationship with the leaders of the church. And, though, and although that's not the priority, but that is very important. If you guys don't like people preaching here, hindi po kayo makikinig. If you don't like the people preaching here, hindi po mapepenetrate ang Word of God. At, inyo, at, at yung inyong uh, uh, perception of the people, of the person preaching here, is, will be the hurdle that the Word of God uh, cannot go through your heart. You know, sometimes, uh, most of the time, and I've experienced that, I know all, almost all the preachers have experienced that, there are people who just can't listen to you. Just, they just can't listen to you. Even if you say one plus one is two, they will, as long as they can, they will disagree. You know, that means that is, that is immaturity. Yeah. If, 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 if a, a person is preaching the word of God here, regardless of your opinion of him, you should, let the, you should submit yourself to the truth of the word of God. Yeah. Now, that is the problem here. The apostle, Paul says, the apostle Paul says, We're, you're, uh, the problem in this relationship is not me. It's you. Di ba para bang, minahal kita pero hindi mo ako minamahal. Yun yung sinasabi ni Paul. Ang daming space sa puso ko. Pero sa puso mo, may laman ng iba. No, kasi may, totoo po na yun ang sabihin ni Paul because makikita natin dito kung ano talaga yung laman ng puso ng mga taga-Corinth. Okay? Uh, sabi niya dito, but you are straightened in your own bowels. Yung sabihin po ng bowels dito is like the heart, the liver, kidney, yung mga laman loob. Kasi itong mga Hebrew people, they, they, um, they, they think that emotion comes from that, bowels. 
Pero sa panahon po natin, we say that it's the heart, right? That's why we say, uh, I love you with all my heart. No one says, I love you with all my bowels, right? O kaya, I love you, love, ganon. Pwede ganon din. Pero dito, ito po, bowels, ibig sabihin ito yung, uh, nawala, na, naalala ko na naman eh. Muntik na akong bangunguting kagabi dun eh. Okay. Sabihin, this is where your emotions lie. So sabi sabihin ni Paul, ah, masikip masyado ang inyong mga puso para sa akin. Wala nang laman. Kasi merong, merong ibang laman. Ah, y- yun yung nangyayari doon. So, ah, pa- walang puwang. Ano pong puwang? Hindi ko po alam yung puwang. Ay, space. Yan, yeah, walang space. Okay? Now, um, This to me is one of the hardest things na, sa, sa, na kailangan gawin ng isang leader or isang, na isang leader katulad ni Paul because he has to love these people. He has to love these people. Even though I believe kung flesh lang magsasalita kay Paul, he will not love these people at all. But we have studied last Saturday that love beareth all things. Okay? Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Especially so if you are the leader of the flock of God. You have to learn to love everyone. Even though everyone doesn't love you. That is what Paul is doing. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Paul is being true to this. Paul is trying to live this verse. He's, this is what he's doing. But this is something that is really hard as a pastor. Hindi ka palang pastor, mahirap na eh. Member ka palang, mahirap nang mahalin yung mga hindi mo kasundo. Member, uh, member ka pa lang, it is hard for you to like or even to love or even to pray for people who don't like you or people who you don't like. Who, can, who here can honestly say that I'm praying even for the people that I don't like? Oh, praying in a positive way. But maybe you're just praying that they will just die, drop and die. Maybe you're praying for them in a positive way. You know, that's what the Bible says. That's what we are to do. Because if we really have true love in our hearts, we will love even our enemies. This is what Paul is doing. Uh, Paul is doing. Um, one, one person, uh, illustration I've read, his name is Dirk Williams. Okay, Dirk Williams, uh, during those times, they were being persecuted. So he was fleeing from his persecutors. He was fleeing through uh, a frozen na lake. Tumatakbo siya. Hinahabol siya ng mga uh, autoridad. But then, he was about to get away. But then, these authorities pursuing him uh, cracked the ice. And they fell through. So, Dirk Williams, instead of continuing to run for his life, he stopped and helped them. And then, in return, uh, they imprisoned him and eventually burned him at stake I- I- during that time. I know this is, this is uh, a picture of what true Christian love should be. You know, despite of the things, this, the, the differences, personal preference differences, we should still love each other. And Paul here is talking about relationships inside the church. Relationship with each other as believers. Not only mamaya pa yung sa unbelievers, but Paul is saying, hey, you have to love each other. I love you despite of everything that you have done to me. You should love me as well. Kasi sabi niya, this is the next verse. Now for a recompense in the same, be ye also enlarged. Bigyan nyo din naman ako ng puwang, yon space sa puso nyo. Kasi binigyan ko kayo, ako din naman. Yun ang mahirap eh, kung mahal ka ng mahal, hindi ka minamahal. Yun ang pinakamahirap sa buhay. Pinakamahirap po sa buhay. Mahal mo, pero hindi ka mahal. Talagang ano yon yun ang ano eh, uh, backbreaker. Yung para bang tapos ang usapan, di ba? Kailangan mo nang mag-move on. But, sabi, pero si Paul here, nakikiusap pa rin siya Now, for a recompense, in the same, I speak uh, as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Now, Paul here is saying that I'm like a father to you. Siguro mas masakit yun kung tatay ka, mahal mo yung anak mo, pero hindi sinusuklian yung pagmamahal. Yun ang pinakamahirap doon. Tama. Ma- ano po yan? Masakit, masakit po yan. Okay? Yung, yung ibinigay mo lahat, uh, inalagaan mo through all these years, and then, hindi niya susuklian yung ganong klaseng pagmamahal. That is what the Apostle Paul feels. He's opening his heart to them. Now, this is what I feel. Mahalin niyo din naman ako. Please lang. Yung sinasabi ni Apostle Paul, ako nga, uh, baby pa lang yan, imagine ko pa lang na magbo-boyfriend siya. Ano na ako eh. Iniisip ko na kung anong baril yung bibiling ko someday. Pero, yung pa lang ha, wala, imagine pa lang, paano pa kaya kung eto na si Paul, nararanasan na niya. He, sees, he's, he treats these people like his children in the faith. 
And they are his children in the faith, but they're not treating him in the same way. So he's beseeching them, please love me the same way. Now, bakit po ito nangyari? Bakit mahal sila ni Paul, pero walang lugar si Paul sa puso nila? Bakit? Kasi iba po ang laman ng puso nila. Let's go to uh, the next verse. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what conquered at Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Kaya po walang puwang sila na magmahalan sa loob ng simbahan. Kaya wala silang lugar na mahalin si Apostle po. Kaya wala silang lugar na magmahalan sa loob. Bakit? Meron silang ibang mahal sa labas. Meron silang ibang mahal. Mahal nila ang mundo. Mahal nila ang mga tao sa mundo. You know, hindi po dapat natin i-underestimate ang influence po ng unbelievers sa buhay natin. We should not underestimate the influence of unbelievers in our lives because Satan surely uses them. Satan surely uses them to, to pull us away from the ministry, to pull us away from the church, to pull us away from our love for God. And this is exactly what's happening to these Corinthian people. Okay, what's sad here is the unbelievers are not only outside the church, but inside as well. There are false prophets in the church who they love, who they like, who, was, who persuaded them to change their mind about the Apostle Paul. And we should not underestimate that. Hanging around the wrong people will influence you to have a bad attitude and uh, to have a bad attitude towards believers in church. That is the influence that it will give you. First Corinthians 15:33 says, "Be not deceived; evil communications corrupt good manners." Kahit gaano ka pakabute, kahit gaano ka pakay spiritual, if you will surround yourself with people who do not love the Lord, eventually you will stop, or you or you will you will your love for the Lord will 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 uh will become konti na lang. Okay? Hindi na po ganun kamahal. Ah, hindi niyo na po ganun kamahal ng Panginoon. Which is true. Kung mas mahal po natin ang company ng believers, kung mas mahal po natin ang company ng mga tao na hindi mahal ang Panginoon, na hindi naman agree sa ginagawa natin, na hindi naman alam kung ano yung kalawalhatian ng Panginoon, ang biyaya ng Panginoon, ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon sa atin, eventually magiging ganun din po tayo. That's why we have to be careful. Okay? Sabi na, be not deceived. Okay, magpalok evil communications corrupt good manners. Uh, 1 Kings 1.14 For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. Even Solomon uh, succumbed to this kind of thing. Because of, uh, he surrounded himself with wives who, who are idolaters. He surrounded himself with wives who do not love the Lord. And he was turned away from the Lord. The wisest man who ever lived was turned away from the Lord. Not because of anything else, but because of wrong relationships. But because of putting himself in the midst of people who do not love the Lord. Don't underestimate it. However strong you are, however good you are using your Bible, however spiritual you are, if you don't surround yourselves with godly people as well, you will eventually fail. That's the reason why we have a church. To surround ourselves with believers. That's the reason why we're here in the church. So we can help each other to continue to glorify the Lord. But if we don't surround ourselves with godly people, we will, we will do the opposite. Even the, the Solomon did that. Judges chapter 16 verse 20 and 21. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out, out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with his fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house. Solomon and even Samson, the strongest man who ever lived. Okay? He, was also, uh, he also succumbed to this kind of thing because of one woman, because of one wrong relationship. Don't, don't, under, uh, don't underestimate that. 2 Peter 2, verse 7 and 8. And delivered just lot, vexed. Sabi po dito, vexed. Vexed here meaning to trouble, to tire, or to exhaust. This is the Greek word, kataponeo. That means, uh, and, he, and, and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. You know, remember lot, he went to Sodom. He went to Sodom, and every day, he was surrounded with unbelievers. Every day, he was surrounded with sinful people. Ito yung sinasabi nito yung vexed. Every day, daw na pa, kahit na gaano ka pa manindigan, kahit na gaano ka pa, uh, uh, even, uh, kahit gaano ka pa, subukan na hindi mag-compromise. If araw-araw ba naman, makikita mo yan. 
you are vexed, you will get tired of standing. You will get tired of standing for what is right. Sabi niya dito, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them. In seeing, hearing, again, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Now, the other vex here is a different word. Ba- basanizo, it means to torture, to torment, to harass or distress. Pagpunta niya doon, I believe pagpunta nila doon, he has good, in- he had a good plans. Right? Now, I will not, he did not go into Sodom thinking that to, thinking to uh, compromise his faith. No. He went into Sodom, maybe the first few days or few months, he tried to stand not to do this, what these things are, what people are doing. But, araw-araw ba naman? It's like being tortured. Yun nangyari. Para bang araw-araw na lang, inaaya kang mag- mag-inom. Araw-araw na lang, inaaya kang magbisyo. Araw-araw na lang, inaaya ka sa ganito, sa ganyan, sa kasalanan. Bibigay at bibigay ka rin. Kailangan lang ng Diablo, konting space lang. Konting kahinaan lang. Kont- konting time lang na discourage ka, tapos ka. Why? Because you surrounded yourself with people who will not bring you closer to God. That, 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 that's what happened. So what happened to Lot? Paglabas nila ng Sodom, anong, 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 uh, uh, because of all these things, namatay ang kanyang asawa, although they were able to go out of Sodom uh, 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 with his daughters, we can see here that Sodom is already inside their daughters because of this influence. Even though they were able to go out of Sodom, Sodom was still in them. What did, what did his daughters do to him? Uh, he, he, they, they, uh, they drank him. They made him drunk, right? They made him drink a lot, right? They, they made him drunk. And then what they did was they lied with him. Okay? Uh, uh, so that the, the reason of their daughter, so that our seed will be preserved. So even though they were out of Sodom, because of all the influence, because of all the things that were put in their mind and in their hearts, they are still doing the same thing out of Sodom. So we have to be careful with the influence and the power of sin in our lives. Kaya nga po, it's important na bata pa lang, we are guarding against these things already. Uh, for, for those of us who have children, bata pa lang sila, block na natin yung influence ng sanlibutan sa isip nila. Why? We don't know how powerful that can become when they grow up. The, 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 uh, the devil can use anything in order to just bring them out of the will of God. Okay, that is what happened. Now, this is the reason why we have to separate from worldly influences. Why? We cannot exercise doctrinal purity and, 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 uh, and to be right as a church if we will not separate um, ourselves from worldliness. If we will not separate ourselves from these people. And today, mas naiintindihan ko yan. Na, na, na meron na po akong asawa. Now that I have a wife, I, I understand this principle more. Because when, when, when she gave birth first two, three weeks, I think uh, first two weeks, we, I just let them stay, both of them, at, uh, at our house because uh, I, w- I want her to rest and uh, our baby is uh, maybe not yet ready to go out. But then, the third week, I believe, I'm telling her, hey, we have to go to church. Kailangan na natin umaten. Because God gave us this child and uh, it's not right that we're not going to worship Him. He's the one who gave th- this child to us. So, so, if she's an unbeliever, ano kayo sasabihin niya sa akin? Nakita mo lang ang pagod, pasakit pa yung tahi ko. Hindi pa nga ako sa baby, iyak pa ng iyak. Eh, mag-iingay lang to sa church, huwag na natin dalhin. May storbo pa yung preaching. Di ba? Kung unbeliever siya, hindi po kami magkakasundo. Okay? It's, it doesn't work. It's like, we're committed to each other, but we're going different ways. That is just impossible to happen. Now, I understand it more. Mas lalo ko po naiintindihan why. Maybe, uh, uh, because this is, the, this is what the apostle was telling them, if you are just going to surround yourself with worldly influences, wala na talaga kayong lugar para sa mga, uh, uh, sa mga sa things of the Lord. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Para po kasi tayong mga sundalo na agad sinabak sa laban nung ikaw maligtas. Why? Because when you got saved, you're already in the presence of worldly people. You're already in the battlefield. Para bang uh, agad, laban, agad, sabak. Kaya nga po dapat all the more na lalo tayo mag-surround and, and fellowship with believers. Together with believers. Now, the Apostle Paul here, Paul, <coughs> the Apostle Paul here has given uh, reasons why you should not be yoked together with 
uh, with unbelievers. Sabi niya dito, let's go, go, going back, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what, ito yung reason niya, For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness. Now, ito po ay uh, a quote from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 10. Sabi niya dito, Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. And which is common sense. Okay, uh, kung uh, maybe size matters, of course. Kung kung gagawin mo yon, uh, hindi magiging maayos yung 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 paggawa mo sa farm. But more importantly, an ox is a clean animal to the Jews, an ass is not. That means, magkaiba na sila, hindi na sila pares ng size, magkaiba pa yung kanilang nature. They don't have the same nature. It will not work. Okay, sabi niya dito. For what fellowship had righteousness with uh, with righteousness with uh, with unrighteousness? The Bible says it's saying that if you want to be righteous, even though you are made righteous, but if you want to live a righteous life, you should not have fellowship with unrighteousness. Fellowship means meron kayong pagkakasunduan, meron kayong relationship, meron kayong uh, agreement with each other, and this is something that's hard. Why? Because there are many unbelievers around us. Hindi naman natin pwede sabihin na. Wag na silang kausapin. Pag binati ka nila, hindi mo na sila kakausapin. Because we have to establish somewhat of a relationship that we can use to bring them to Christ. But then we have to, uh, to, to uh, uh, draw that line na hindi natin kailangan lagpasan. Why? Because we can never be righteous uh, 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 pagka yun ang ginawa natin. And equally yoked together is from the Greek word heter, heterozugeo, which means another of a kind. Ibig sabihin, iba silang ure. Iba ka. Ibang uri sila. Iba yung nature nila. Well, the Bible doesn't even consider them the same with us. If you go to the, if you look at the Old Testament, even the Israelites' problem is this: every time they go away from the will of God, it's because of the influence of pagan people. Every time that they go away from the will of God, it's because they let these pagan people, unbelievers, go into inside their inside their uh, houses, inside their place. That is the problem. We should never underestimate. Uh, this kind for what fellowship had righteousness with righteousness with unrighteousness hindi lang po yan sa kahit anong relasyon kahit po sa pagkakaibigan what kind of friendship do we have with unbelievers we have to watch that kung meron tayong friendship that kasi para po sa akin ito na-enjoy mo yung kanilang company na-enjoy nila yung iyong company is there something wrong i don't believe that you can enjoy each other's company at all because what they're doing are things that doesn't glorify God. What you should be doing are things that glorify God. How can you agree? How can you enjoy each other's company? You can only do that if you compromise. You, all, you have to compromise. If you don't compromise, they will not like you at all. But they're not, have you talked about godly things with them? Try talking about godly things with them. They will zip their mouth. But in their mind, hmm, or ni naman ito. And then, they will not seek your company again. No, that we have to compromise. Keeping these friendships will, will not help us in our righteousness. Sabi pa dito, another, uh, another reason, and what communion has light with darkness? This is a truth. Ito po ay katotohanan that this is a fact of life, actually. Light and darkness cannot coexist. That is what, what the Bible is saying. They cannot coexist. There's no getting away from that fact. There's no getting away from that. Kung, kung uh, light and darkness cannot coexist, that is what they're com uh, comparing us. They're in darkness. We are the light. We cannot coexist. Hindi tayo pwedeng magsama. It's, it's just something that we cannot get away from. Okay? Pero marami na po ako narinig. Uh, I have seen, I have heard a lot of um, excuses. Uh, but, I have, but I have seen it work. You know, unbeliever, uh, husband, and, 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 and uh, a believing wife, it works. They make the relationship work. How do they do that? How? Tell me how to, when, when they have kids, how will they make that work? Okay, uh, they said that, but, but I have seen people uh, work it out. I have seen people uh, do, uh, uh, they, they love unbelievers and then they, through dating and through the relationship, they try to win them to Christ. You know, maybe sometimes it works, but most of the time it doesn't. But why would you put yourself in that kind of position in the first place? Okay, it is, it is something that is uh, impossible to happen because the unbeliever will not share 
the joy of Christ in your life. The unbeliever will not enjoy the eternal life that you're enjoying. The unbeliever will not under, under, understand the things of God. The unbeliever will only have eternal torment waiting for them. And there's no, simply no communion between them. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Except they be agreed. There's, it's impossible. It's not going to happen. And what conquered hath Christ with Belial? Conquered here means symphony. Para bang uh, kinokumpara yung relationship ng believers and believer pag meron silang uh, 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 sharing relationship para bang merong mga instruments playing around you iba-ibang awit ang pinutugtog nila ganun kagulo okay uh, there's no symphony there's no agreement there's a uh, ibig sabihin ng belial it means worthlessness worthless Okay, so if you are if you're trying to, to make a relationship work with unbelievers, the Bible says they are worthless and it's not going to work. Para kayong sintonadong banda. Okay? Para kayong nagduet, magkaibang awit ang kinanta nyo. That is what that, that, that is uh, that is what they're saying. We must realize here that unbelievers are under the control of Satan. That's why I always cringe when I hear people say, "Mabuti pa ngayong unbeliever." Eh. I always cringe because they don't understand the word of God. Minsan, mukang mas mabuti pa yung unbeliever. Pero one click lang, nasa kamayan ni satanas. One click, Satan can use that to destroy your life. And I can tell you with all boldness, the, the kindest unbeliever you know is worse than the worst Christian you know. Why? Because a Christian who is truly a Christian under God's control can change for the better. And, and is under the uh, authority of the Word of God. But an unbeliever, however kind, however uh, uh, g- uh, gentle they are, can in an instant be controlled by the devil and destroy your life. That's why it doesn't work. Kaya nga sabihin, pipiliin ko na yung unbeliever kaysa naman yung mga Kristiyano sa loob ng simbahan. That is an absurd statement. It's a very absurd statement. Na hinda, kadalasa ko pong naririnig sa mga... Kabataan. When I was in the Philippines, I, I, I read the story. There's a man who's selling his house for two thousand dollars, and a poor and one poor man wanted to buy that house so badly that he uh, bargained with that person. Said so, the, the person eventually agreed. Okay, I'll sell you the house for half the price, for under one con- in one condition. This nail that's protruding out of the wall, it remains to be under my possession. So he agreed. Well. For half the price, it's a bargain. So he bought the house, and after the few, a few years, the man who sold it to him came back and wanted to buy the house again. But this man said, no, I don't, I don't want to sell this house. I love this house already. No, okay. What he did was he went out, he, he, he took a dead dog and hung it on the nail that is protruding from the wall of that house. And eventually, the smell became so unbearable that they had to, they had to leave the house. You know, what, this is an example of, of, of um, if we give Satan even a little bit or a little part in our lives, he can use that to destroy everything. That's why, kaibigan lang naman yan, okay lang yan. Kala mo lang yun. Uh, 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 tawag dito, uh, mga nakasama ko lang yan naman, minsan-minsan, kala mo lang yun. If, if your goal is not to win them to Christ, then you are in a wrong relationship. If your goal is not to win them to the Lord, you are in a wrong relationship. Don't give Satan that luxury to one day destroy your life because you're surrounding yourself or you are in, in a relationship with unbeliever. What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Okay, you see here what kind of words Paul is using uh, to, to, to describe these unbelievers. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Agreement here is, is the word uh, uh, sukatatesis, which means to deposit together with another person, to vote together with someone or to consent. Ibig sabihin nito, anong classic agreement ang temple of God with the idols? This is something that is completely different or completely against each other. Now, what's, what is supposed to be against each other? What is supposed to be na, na nagaaway, pinagkakasundo natin? That is what's happening. So because the Bible says we are the temple of the living God. And we are trying to, 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 to use this temple in a relationship with idols. These people are idolaters. God hates idol, uh, idolatry. God hates idolaters. God hates idols. God hates them. God loves us. But we still try to do that. That's, that's, that's the problem with these people. Okay? For ye are the temple 
of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Ito po yung pangako ng Panginoon. Uh, this is, this is uh, uh, dito, a quote again from the Old Testament. But binasa po ni dati ito kanina, 1 Corinthians 6.19. What? Know ye not that your, the, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body is not yours. You are not your own. You are owned by God. And what God wants is for you to separate from people who are of bad influences. To separate from people who will not bring you closer to God. And our job is to obey that. Our job is to obey that. Wala lang po tayong iba pang pwedeng gawin. God doesn't want any part of them in our lives. Para bang, ang root naman, para bang hindi na, para bang antag dito? Hindi racist yung part nun eh. Word, uh, fatist. Uh, para bang dinidiscriminate natin sila masyado. No, we love them. We want them to come to Christ, in repentance to Christ. But we don't want uh, our lives to be, uh, them to be part of our lives. Why? Because uh, as, as I have said again, God, uh, uh, Satan can use them. Sabi niya, for ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, ito yung pangako ng Panginoon, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Which is happening now. Okay, uh, that is that verse is in Isaiah. But pero sa panahon natin, it's already happening. God has dwelt in us. We are now the temple of God. Kaya nga sabi niya sa next verse, Wherefore, because I have dwelt in you, I have fulfilled that promise. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. That is now the command. Because I'm dwelling with you, I'm leading you, I'm in your life. My command is separate from them. Uh, uh, come out from among them. You know, the life of a Christian is a life of separation. It doesn't mean that it's a lonely life. It doesn't mean that it's a life not worth living. But it's a, it's a life that has to be separated from the world. Kailangan po natin matutunan to be separated. Personally muna, bago as a church, we have to be separated to come out from among them. Sino to them? These people who are idolaters. These people who are infidel. These people who are in darkness. I'm not, I'm not hating them, but this is what the Bible says. To separate from them. Okay? And that is the command. After that command, there's another promise. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. That is another promise. Now, yung mga pen, uh, 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 people who like to be emotional in the church always like God's promises. I claim this, I claim that, claim this, claim that. But in the Bible, all promises has premise. Ang mga pangako ng Panginoon, meron po yung kondisyon. Sabi niya, I will receive you. Bag, ano, bag, bag, bago yung promise na yun, sabi, you come out from among them. Okay, para ba sinasabi ng Panginoon? Sige, iwanan niyo sila, bitawan niyo sila, and I will receive you. And I will make you realize that I am better than them. That I am enough for you. Amen. You know, kad kadalasa po, hindi natin mabitawan kasi hindi tayo naniniwala sa pangako ng Panginoon. Amen. That is the truth. Sabi ng Panginoon, wag, wag sila, wag sila yung mahalin mo, wag sila yung lagay mo sa puso mo, ako ang dapat nandyan. Now, if you let go of them, I will be in your heart, I will make you, uh, you we will, we will uh, realize the joy, the fulfillment, the contentment that God can give us, but we really don't believe it. Pag binitawan ko to Panginoon, masakit. Hindi po ako naniniwalang kaya niyong palitan to. Yun yung nangyayari. There's a reason why we, 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 we read the promise, we know the promise, and, and another promise here, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. That is the promise. But we don't believe it, so we hold on to the things that God said to separate from among them. Kapatid, naniniwala po ba talaga tayo sa Bible? Do we really believe that God is enough for us? Do we really believe that God's, uh, that our relationship with God is enough, whether, uh, uh, whether or not we have relationship with other people? Do we really believe that? Or, or, or binabasa lang natin and then sa mind natin, eh, sa tingin ko, I, I don't think God can really do that. Because this person is so important to me. Ah, he has helped me a lot through, through these problems. When I was down, he was there. When I was down, she was there. Itong best friend kong to, siya talaga yung nandyan palagi. She has never failed me. Kapatid, nagpinapadama ka lang ng jablo. Pinapadama ka lang. The Bible says, let go of that relationship. Why? The reason why you don't love God as much as God wants you to love Him is because meron pang ibang laman. And you have to remove it. Sometimes, God, 
nahaharangan lang po ang blessing ng Panginoon just because of this thing that we don't want to let go. Yung blessing ng Panginoon, nahaharangan. Hindi po niya talaga mabigay. God's desire is to give us all this, this joy that, that He has given the Apostle Paul. But, hindi po natin mahayaan dahil meron pa tayong some things that we are holding dear into our lives. I'm not talking, I'm talking about all these things. Boyfriend, girlfriend, kung ano man yan, best friend, kaibigan lang. All of these things, we have to let go. We have to let them know, I will not be a friend to you unless we agree. I will not be. I, I want you to, to come. I want you to be with me. I want to bring you to Christ. But if you really don't want, that is the end of our relationship. That is the end of our friendship. Because I believe that friendship cannot agree. Uh, kung hindi tayo, ka, hindi natin, hindi tayo pwede mag-agree sa mga kaibigan na hindi din nag agree sa salita ng Panginoon. Through, uh, friendship has to end when the Bible is compromised. And when that friendship is trying to make you compromise, it has to end. Kahit na sabihin mo nang tagal na, 15 years na kami magkaibigan, 20 years na kami magkaibigan, kapatid, maliwanag ang Bible. Wala naman po, wala akong nababasang exception dito. Kasi yung iba, sabihin, well, well, okay, I know what's the Bible, what's, that's what the Bible says, but maybe may exception kasi ito yung sitwasyon ko eh. Siguro okay na to, maintindihan to ng Panginoon. Wala po akong nababasa dito. Brad naman, 30 years na kami magkaibigan, kailangan ko pa siyang bitawan. Eh, yun ang sabi ng Bible. To come out from among them. It doesn't matter. Whoever he is, whoever she is, you have to end the relationship. Okay? Now, we're talking about unbelievers. Now, let's, let's put it in, a, in, in, in a, uh, uh, the believer's side. When there's a person who doesn't want to agree with you in the biblical truth, it has to come to a point that you ha- she has to choose. They have to choose whether to be in fellowship with you or not. Kaya nga po bilang mga Kristiyano, bilang mga tao po na naninindigan sa katotohanan ng Biblia, hindi na rin po dapat tayo nakikipag-fellowship sa ayaw manindigan sa katotohanan ng Biblia. However it hurts, however we hate to do that, but it must happen if we are to remain doctrinally pure. Why? Because remaining to be friends with them, pwede rin gamitin na niyang jablo para mag-compromise din tayo sa pinaninindigan natin. Kaya nga po, for me, I don't know, this is my personal stand. If any one of us like go to the Philippines or have vacation, don't go to a church who has first fruits giving. To me, personally. Or unless you're gonna preach for them, but then you're just gonna attend their dope. Why? What fellowship do you have with them? Now, it's, it's not as if we haven't to- they haven't heard the truth. But the, the message, kasi, the message kasi that, that, that you are giving is, hey, we, uh, we're standing for the truth, but uh, we still want this friendship. It doesn't work that way. Because if they will give their lives to stand for that, and you give your life to stand for another thing, you should not be agreeing with each other. Kahit sino pa sila. Okay? Kunyari, umuwi kami Pilipinas, hindi ako mag-attend sa temple. Why? Why will I attend there? The, the church is being used as a, a, a platform for politics. The church is being used as a platform for proud pastors. I don't want to go there. Because they're not glorifying the Lord. And I would, don't want to join a church who's not glorifying the Lord. However, it, it hurts because there are people there who, I, who, uh, who has been a part of my life, especially Pastor Emerson, who has treated me like his son for four years. Uh, uh, he, they opened their home for me. Uh, they, 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 uh, lagi nila, uh, they, they never did anything bad to me. But it just so happens that they don't agree with the Word of God. It has to end there. Now, of course, we have to be like Paul, open for reconciliation anytime. But unless they do their part, there's no reconciliation. This is, we might say, that's a very sad life, Brother Jong. I don't know. If we go to heaven, ask the Apostle Paul if he had if lived a sad life. I don't think he will say, I lived a sad life. Even though he came to a point that no one stood with him because of the truth. He still, he's still the one telling people to rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Why? It's not a sad life. A life of separation, not only away from wrong, but towards God, is a life that is worth living. It doesn't matter, kayang palitan ng Panginoon kahit sino po yan. Kayang palitan ng Panginoon kahit ano pa pong simbahan yan, papalitan po ng Panginoon yan. We just have to believe and trust the Lord, and we just have to obey His command. Come out from among them. Do not touch the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you. And before I end, I believe that it, it, uh, this, this message calls for uh, the last verse. It says here that I will be a, f- a father unto you and you shall be my sons. As believers, tayo po anak ng Panginoon and He's our Father. And if anyone here this afternoon doesn't have that relationship, 
with the Lord. I pray that this is the time that you open your heart and see your condition in front of the Lord. Do you really have that relationship? You know, because if you, are, you don't have this personal relationship with the Lord, it's sad to say you are not saved. Okay? Whatever is it. You, even if you have already prayed a prayer, nasheran ka na, nakapag-attend ka na sa, sa simbahan, hindi po yan ang nakakapagligtas. What, what ang nakakapagligtas is you, you turn, like, like, like believers, you separate yourself, you turn, yourself, you turn your back from sin, you repent of your sin, and you put your faith in Christ. The Bible says that I will be your father. Sabi sa John 1.12, But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We are not all sons of God. We are not all children of God. We pray that we all are. We pray that we, all of us will be someday. But this, it has a condition. You will be the son of God if you will repent and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that every one of us, kung meron po dito na hindi paligtas, or if you say in your heart that I don't really have that relationship in Christ, today is the day. Today is the day. Now is the time of salvation. Hindi na po bukas. You're not sure of tomorrow. This might be the last time that the Holy Spirit will be knocking in your heart. Wag po natin isarado ang puso natin sa, 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 sa pangungusap ng Holy Spirit. Even for believers, if, you, if there's things, there are things that you saw in this message na kailangan kong bitawan, kailangan kong tigilan, kailangan ko pong uh, talikuran, Lord, I will not block my heart. I will heed to your call. I will take the challenge. And Lord, I am expecting the promise that you have given me in these verses. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, the short message. Thank you for some principles, Lord, that we, uh, that we saw uh, in, in, in keeping our relationships. Dear Lord, we pray, Lord, that uh, we will be prioritizing our relationship with you and uh, relationship, dear Lord, with our fellow believers. And Lord, not, and not let relationships with the world and worldly people hinder our love for you and love for our fellow believers, dear Lord. Help us, Lord, realize that we can do so much more, we can be so much more, and we can achieve so much more if we will just let all these worldly influences away from our lives and we will just submit our, uh, our lives to your word, dear Lord. I pray that you give each and every one enough grace and mercy, dear Lord, and strength to do these things. And not do these things for selfish purposes, dear Lord, but do these things only because that's what you said. And we want to glorify your name and obey your word. And, and may, you be, may your name be glorified continuously as we continue our service. In Jesus' name I pray.